Yo guys, Haku here with my review of the anime series Yuri Kuma Arash. So I came into this series with knowing nothing about it except for the summary that I read and the opening. I had saw, I had seen the opening theme because I just the way I found it was I was just browsing YouTube for bad anime like anime openings that look like the series was bad so I could review something that would be funny to review. So I came into the so I came into this thinking that it was just going to be like really just etchy fan service nonsense. It was going to have like no real plot or anything substantial to it. It was just going to be a silly little etchy show. I mean, hell, Yurikuma Arash is pretty much lesbian bear storm. So I just thought it was going to be some random girl on girl. They can turn into magical bears because anime and that was about all that the series would have to offer and I'll get into it but I learned through watching it that I was completely wrong I had been so wrong in judging it like that before even seeing it but I think that may have made the enjoyment even more because I thought it was going to be very very bad and ended up thinking that it was relatively pretty good now to explain the basic premise to you guys, all I can really say about it is a magical meteor named Kumalia just split apart and rained all over Earth and after that the bears rose up and started eating humans, the humans fought back against the bears, and eventually a wall was erected between the human and, be the human and bear worlds and it was called the Wall of Severance. Now then, as what's going to become usual before I break down the plot and my thoughts on that and give my score and general thoughts I'm going to give my thoughts on the characters. Now first up is Subaki Kreha and Kreha was really um I guess the best way that I can explain it was that she annoyed me. She felt like a very Sakura-esque character and in that she just whined a lot and all of the good characters and the events of the series didn't happen because of her or involving her that much. They happened t around her. They just, the important stuff happened around her and she just kind of sat in the middle whining. So yeah, nearly all of the series I hated Kreha. Next up is Sumika Izumino or Izumino Sumika. Don't remember which. But either way, name's the same. Uh, she was Kreha's girlfriend from the beginning of the series, and she was very useless. She really did nothing the entire series. She had no real... she just didn't do anything. I mean, she provided some inspiration for Kreha to do things, but she herself never did anything the entire series, really. Next up is Yurizono Mitsuki, and Mitsuki was one of those characters that felt a bit generic, like there's a character like her in every series, but I generally like that sort of archetype. So I liked Mitsuko, I thought she was one of the more interesting characters just in herself. She was, she just had an interesting personality and story. Then there's the teacher, Yuriika Hakonaka. And Yuri Ika had a pretty deep story that they didn't really get into toward until the second half of the anime. But I don't want to spoil anything. I'm going to be very light on spoilers. I'm not really going to say plot events. I'm just going to give general thoughts on everything that happened. And I thought she was a very good character. I really liked her story once we got to find it out. And she just... She was a lot deeper than a lot of the other characters and her story was a really good portion of the plot. I really enjoyed it. Thought Yuri Ika was a very good character, very well written. As for some of their other classmates that weren't really that important but I felt were important enough to just list off saying okay these are characters to look out for because they are a part of the um, important the the more important cast so I just have a couple names written down Oki Choko, Yurikawa Konomi, and Harishima Kaoru. Oh I remember ha Harishima Kaoru she was 
Very good looking. Definitely remember her. So, um... They were just the random sort of side characters. They had a little bit of importance, but weren't big enough to detail. So, yeah. Now going into our two bears disguised as humans infiltrating the human world that we know about from the beginning of the series. Not really a spoiler. And that would be, first, Yurishiro Ginko. And she was the one of the best written characters I've seen in anime in a long time. Ginko was so enjoyable. Like, you see people arguing, oh, in this anime, Blank is best girl. Ginko was perfect girl. Like, her personality and just her character and history was very good. She was a very well done character. Almost, I almost wish she was in, like, a better anime because she was such a good character. So, yeah. Um, Yuri Shiro Ginko was amazing, she was a criminal bear, and she really made the story for me. I, I could say that I probably watched the entire anime mostly for her and her plot, and she was really the one that I sort of got behind and rooted for to succeed in what she was doing a lot more than Kreha. And then lastly for the bears there was um, the former princess of the bears, Yurigasaki Ruru. And Lulu was um, very entertaining, very funny. A lot of her moments were really cute. She was a good... She was the comedic part of the main characters. And she did, she did her part very well because she went beyond being comedic to being a very enjoyable, serious character too at many times, especially towards the end. And in her backstory, it was still funny, but it was tragic and it was enjoyable. Lastly is the Wall of Severance, which was a group of three bears that ruled between human and bear. So they were sort of like human-bear hybrids, I suppose is the best way to explain them. And they made up a judge, a prosecutor, and a defense counsel. First up is the prosecutor, Life Cool. So, Life Cool was just the normal Bishonin in glasses, thought rules were so important and rules are the best thing ever, and was always pronouncing whoever was up for trial guilty. guilty. But the thing with him is, he pretty much never won, so he could have not even been there because pretty much he just said something and then the defense counsel would shoot him down and... That's pretty much his role in the story, is he would just show up and get shot down. Next up was the defense counsel that was just there to shoot down the, everything the prosecutor said, and that was Life Beauty, the normal little brother style Bishonen, who um, just would just, um, yeah, just be the cute little guy looking guy yelling kira kira or sparkle sparkle at the end of every sentence and shutting down everything the prosecutor had to say kira, kira. honestly he was probably the best defense counsel ever like he pretty much won every single case in the series so i mean hey kira, kira. and lastly the judge who was probably the best character maybe even better than ginko because he was so funny. He was so enjoyable. He made the series. He was hilarious. Every moment with him in it was like the moments I remember the most and the moments I laughed the most about. And that was Life Sexy. And Life Sexy, the judge of the Wall of Severance, Man Bear, Man Bear Pig, but um, Man Bear, whatever he was, he was hilarious. He was the best. And he would always end, when he, whenever he passed judgment, or really said anything, really, he would always end with, like, Sore ga sexy, or Shabaradu. Shabaradu. Or both. And just, for some reason, I just... I was done. I just, I just fell apart laughing every time he ended a sentence by just this serious-looking guy. Shabaradu. It was the best, the best thing that they could have done. I don't know why, it was so silly, but it really made the anime. Now for my breakdown of the show itself. If you don't like surrealism or super artsy style, then you're not going to like it. 
because the entire thing was made up of things that didn't really always happen physically, but they were sort of metaphors for things happening or vi visualizations. And the entire anime, like both visually and plot wise, was very. I suppose the best word for it is just really. just artsy. It was very artsy. You look at it and the art was very stylistic and it had a lot of cutaways to things that didn't really happen. They were just symbolism for things. And the plot was very non-linear. It was jumping around a bit and it was very hard to follow really. It was a very loose plot. Now that said, the fan service wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. The fan service was really not too bad at all even so it, the first episode or two maybe third episode even was a little fan service heavy but after that it kind of it kind of shifted from just mindless incoherent plot and fan service to being a more good and serious story as for the opening and ending and you know i'm huge on good openings and endings i really just for some reason, opening and endings in anime are like my favorite part of anime. The opening, the song, it sounded like it sounded like Nyaners. It really did. That's all I could think of. It sounded like Nyaners, and the visuals were pretty weird. <laughs> it was like the reason I watched it. It looked weird and it didn't look very good, but it grew on me like over time like it became very relaxing it was a very relaxing opening and then the ending the ending was straight fire i like i was jamming out to the ending the end of every episode it was great if anything just go watch the ending if you think you might not like it you'll at least like the ending so for the first three episodes my thoughts were that the plot was super sloppy and incoherent like it just wasn't very good and the bears are there in their human form disguises but they're very bad disguises like they're wearing bear accessories and hairpins and stuff and in a world where bears are hated and the enemy of humans wouldn't a human walking around wearing bear accessories be a bit damn suspicious like wouldn't that be something that people would look at and be like you know Maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't hang around them. Because even if they're not bears, they're bear sympathizers. I don't know. I, I had a point, but I lost it somewhere in there. Point is, it wasn't a very good disguise. That and they ended every sentence with, Gow, gow. <laughs> Which, at first I thought, I was like, oh, this is so bad and cheesy. Because I hate when anime does that, when they just add something to the end of a sentence. And I absolutely love One Piece, but One Piece does it all the time. And it's not something I typically like. But towards the end, like, every time Ginkgo said something, I was like, gow gow, along with her. So, I mean, it really became something that, like, drew... It really, like, caught attention and was like a fun, just, quirk. And it was a very quirky anime. I guess I can say that. So everything in this anime, everything is lesbian. I'm pretty sure they eat, like, all the people are lesbian. There was, like, maybe a couple men ever even shown. Pretty much everyone's lesbian. Even the people with children were somehow lesbian as well. And, like, I think they went to a supermarket at some point and the stuff was labeled, like, y Yuri Milk or Yuri Beef. Like, Yuri Ground Beef. Like, the supermarket was full of, like, lesbian ground beef. Like, what is this? Everything was, like gay. Everything was gay. That, that's the one thing I can say about this anime. Everything was gay. Like in a serious way. Not saying it was bad. Like g gay isn't an insult. But I mean everything was gay in the most serious way that I could call something gay. So this one thing that <laughs> it bothered me at first but eventually I just came to laugh about every time and I wrote it in my notes every time it happened was freaking... Whenever a bear did something dramatic, they would cut away to this little just random screen of the bear or a bear claw or something, and it would just be these women yelling, Shock! Kuma Shock! And I'll probably like, I don't know. Shock! Kuma Shock! 
Oh shit! Why didn't I put a Kuma trigger warning in the description? I about Kuma shit myself. So freaking scary. Every time it happened. So beyond that terrible joke, getting into episode 4, things got a little more serious, and there were some feels. Uh, they gave me some feels, not many, especially not towards the, not as much as the later part of the series, but it was, it was better. <laughs> it got a lot better starting at episode 4, I suppose. Getting into episodes 5 to 7, like, it had good twists, and it was really funny. And it was a good, it had a good use of lies. Like, if a character says something, you usually say, oh, the character's telling the truth, this is, this is right for the universe or whatever. But they had some lies that were misleading to the viewers, and honestly, I think that worked out really well. And it really was sort of good writing on their point, uh, on their part. I really did like it. And I feel like it kept me invested, kept me interested in what was going on. Because if I've stuck through an anime that's not like great or hugely popular by the time I've hit this five to seven episode mark, if it's not good, that's the part where I'm usually like, I can't take it anymore. I've got to dip out of this anime. But it kept me intrigued enough to press on to continue. So I remember as soon as I finished episode eight saying that not since Hunter x Hunter has a single, single episode of an anime been that perfect, been that well made. Somehow this anime I thought was going to be completely crappy, episode 8 was a brilliant episode of any anime. It was just so good. Like, I, I don't know if I would recommend sticking through the series just to get to episode 8 to see how great it is, because this certainly isn't a series for everyone. If you like linear stories, if you don't like artsy stuff, you're not going to like this at all. It is not going to be your thing because it is very niche and artsy. So uh, yeah, episode 8, pure genius, beautiful. Episode 9 was really, it was a touching episode. It was very touching and it was a great episode again, not as much as 8, but still very good. And it had a lot of life sexy funny moments, and I really liked life sexy. So, all in all, it was a good episode in my opinion. Now, into episode 10, episode 10 was so full of feels. The feels were rolling hard. Like, episode 10 just started flooding you with feels. I don't even know what else to say about it. And then into episode 11, <laughs> this is something like... It's hard to admit because I don't do this often, but episode 11 of this made me cry twice. Like, I thought this was going to be complete crap and an episode made me cry twice. Episode 11 was full of feels. It was, again, damn near perfect. Like, it was such a brilliant episode of anime. Like, this turned out to be very good in my opinion. Like, not even just good, but it was very good. I mean, but... I do like artsy anime and stuff like that, but either way, good, very good. Now the finale, episode 12, was not, not as good as I expected. It was good, don't get me wrong, but it just didn't live up to 8 or 11. It, it was okay. It was okay. It had its good parts, but I feel like the entire first half of it was really slowly paced, and for a finale, it just wasn't... It, 11 would have made a greater finale than 12. 12 didn't do that wonderful a job at ending the series. I feel bad saying that, but um, yeah. 12 was great, but not that great. It was feels heavy, though. 12 was quite feels heavy. And I remember saying at the end of it, like, just that's it for the anime. And the, the words I said at the end of it to myself and to my friend were... My heart hurts. It just, it made my heart hurt the end of this anime. It was very... <clears throat> ah, throat hurt. Overall, the anime was very, um, just somber and sad. And it, it just, it was funny and hilarious the whole way through. But it just depressed, even being funny and hilarious, it just depressed me. There were so many sad parts. And the sad parts were artsy. 
so some of the feeling was taken away compared to some more straightforward sad anime like Code Geass constantly broke my heart but it was more linear in the way it did it it was more ideas and stuff that were just depressing throughout your Yuri Kumarash so um that that's my thoughts on 12 those feels heavy made my heart hurt and really encapsulated the feels of the anime but it wasn't the best episode wasn't the shining point of the series so I'm gonna say that this anime had brilliant layering the layering of story was very well done and it was very very artsy I've said that a million times because I guess I'm not very creative and I also was looking off to the side there for some unknown reason but um yeah I've got to say that not the not the best but but if it's your thing it was very good very enjoyable I think one of the bigger parts is that it was great at keeping attention keeping attention was something that it was it was very good at doing by the way it layered itself back going back into the layering and it actually got me I usually hate romantic subplots I'm not a big romance fan but I really did enjoy the romance parts of Yuri Kumarash and I was always cheering for Ginko to get her get her girl I mean like it got me excited and rooting for romance even so it kind of did something special that most anime don't do for me in the end it was great art and I'm going to actually give it 8.5 lesbian bears out of 10 which is a really high score for me like really high 8.5 out of 10 it was good like it was really good if that's what you're into but if it's not what you're into you're not going to like it I'll just I'm going to be fair and tell you guys my honest opinion my honest opinion if you like artsy anime and sort of non-linear writing you're going to absolutely love this and think it's brilliantly done and a lot of people that like that kind of thing do it's by the same guy that wrote Mawaru Penguin Drum I think and I think that's a sort of similar story I haven't seen it but from what I read because I definitely studied up on this after I watched for this review but um yeah great and if it's not what you like if you just like a normal story with normal characters and a plot that is pretty coherent and straightforward you're not gonna like this at all you're gonna hate it you're gonna think it's silly and ridiculous that's my honest opinion honest 8.5 out of 10 I've talked way too much about that conclusion <laughs> so um like if you guys liked it share with your fellow anime fans um, Comment down there what you thought about the anime, what you thought of my thoughts on the anime. Subscribe for at least one, maybe two anime reviews per week. I might do like a series review on the weekend and then a OVA review or a movie review on Wednesday. That actually sounds kind of doable for me, so I may consider that. Follow on Twitter for updates on what's going on. Um... Also, if you subscribe, I forgot to say it, I do like three to four The Walking Dead, One Piece, and Tower of God videos per week if you like any of those series. And I think that's about it. Thank you guys for sticking through this nearly half hour long video. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I really do. I tried to be, tried to be pretty good with this. And um, I'll see you guys next time.